Venkatesh J to open the library section in the memory of late Mr. G. M. Vridhachana. Present here. The meeting is called to order. Every beginning requires a welcome. To begin today's event, I request President MMBA, Mr. S. Srinivasa Raghavan. I welcome MMBA is known for its rich library ever since its inception in the year 2005. Periodically, we have been uploading the library by supplying new books and also by replenishing the old ones. And we take pride in announcing that we were the first to start the e-library in the entire state of Tamil Nadu. So I thank all the supporters of the Bar Association for keeping the library abreast of all the latest books and uh, journals. And we have momentous occasions where library sections were being opened in the past. Due to lockdown, we could not do it for the past two and a half years. So now the time has come. So for this momentous occasion, I wholeheartedly welcome Honourable Mr. Justice and Anand Vekatesh, who has consented to open the library section. And uh, this library section is made possible because of the patronage and sponsor of the members of the family of the Dayan of the Bar, late G. Brothers of India. And uh, Mr. Padanjali, his son, is not in a position to come today because of his indisposition. And his brother, Mr. Rajesh Vidyasar, is present today. Sir, you are most welcome. I thank you. I also welcome the former presidents of MMBA, the former secretaries, our senior councils, and the members of the bar, especially youngsters, um, to this function. And I hope this function will give the required impetus for the members of the bar to inculcate the need and requirement of updating their knowledge. And I hope this library will cater their needs. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. True honor is an outflow from the heart. May I now request the President of MMBA, Mr. S. Srinivas Raghavan, to honor our Chief Guest, Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh Jai, Madras High Court with a memento. May I now request the Secretary of MMBA, Mr. K. P. Narayana Kumar, to honor our Chief Guest, the Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh Jai, with a memorable gift. May I now request the Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh Jai, to honor Mr. Rajesh Bhrita Chalam with a memento. Thank you, Lord Shiv. Thank you, sir. May I now request the treasurer of MMBA, Mr. Yes Venkatesh, to honor our today's felicitator, Additional Advocate General, Madras High Court, Mr. R. Baskaran with a memento. Thank you, sirs. May I now request the Joint Secretary of MMBA, Mr. Ajay Ghosh, to honor our today's felicitator, Mr. M. Subhash Babu, advocate with the memento. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Executive Committee member of MMBA, Mr. C. Prithiviraj, to honor our today's felicitator, Mr. T. Sandal Kumar, additional public prosecutor, Madras High Court, with a memento. Thank you, sir. May I now request the Executive member of MMBA, Mr. S. Vinod Sudali Madan, to honor our today's felicitator, Mr. T. A. Om Prakash, advocate with a memento. Thank you, sir. The essence of management is to make knowledge productive. May I now request the librarian of MMBA, Mr. Prabhu, to read the library report. Honorable Mr. Justice Anand Bengdesh, Respecter Mr. President, the General Secretary, the other distinguished guests and my fellow advocates, a very good evening. The word library derived from the French word library and Latin word liber is equal to book. The library plays an important role in our professional as well as social lives. And more especially, a law library is impactful beyond the imagination. The MMBA library, which I would probably say is the uniqueness of not just our association alone, but of any and every advice practicing at Madurai Bench. From the date of its inception in the year 2005, the library was always being functioning 
at excellence. In fact, MMBA holds the privilege of being one of the few associations in the country to introduce I and E library in its premises at a very early stages. Though inception of the MMBA library is due to the efforts of founding members of the association, the successful program was has been aided by continued support of the office bearers thereafter. Our honorable judges and our generous members of the association, the thousands of people who pass us through this door every day are a testament to value of this library to the librarianship as a whole. Without further ado, let me address the main event. I extend my appreciation and gratitude towards Mr. Padanjali Virdachalam, Mr. Rajesh Virdachalam and their family for helping us to add another distinguished color to our spectrum by coming forward to enhance us in opening the new library section in the great, great memory of late Mr. G. M. Virdachalam Reddy, who was an eminent lawyer in a criminal laws who had been appeared in various landmark cases for the former chief netters of Tamil Nadu. There is no better way to explain the importance of the book than to say that even God chose the medium of books. With this, I conclude my address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A library is the delivery room for the birth of ideas, a place where history comes to life. The best thing about MMBA is its vast collection of books. MMBA is always very keen in providing all the necessities which our fraternity is in need of. Especially, the collection of journals, digests and commentaries are on par with any other bar association in our state. MMBA is privileged to have the one who is fondly called as the walking library of Madras High Court by the Advocate Fraternity, who is none other than our Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh, the befitting person for opening the library section and to deliver the special address. May I now request our Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh J. to deliver a special address. President MMBA, the other office bearers of MMBA, Mr. Rajesh Vrdachalam, senior advocates, my beloved junior advocates, good evening to all. I stand here with a very sense of pride that I have been called to inaugurate a library section in the name of the doyen of the criminal bar, Mr. Vrdachalam. I feel it a honor and thank you so much for inviting me for this. I have not seen him in action, but I have heard about him from Justice Nagamutuje because he was very closely associated with him and the style of Mr. Vridhachalam was reflected in the manner in which Justice Nagamutu used to do trial cases. I have seen some of uh, the depositions where Justice Nagamutu had cross-examined and all that. I I will find that it, it will not exceed one to one and a half pages. So, uh, these are sparks, I think, which he has uh, basically cultivated, inculcated uh, by watching the Doy and Mr. Pradachalam Pradya. Library, as we all know, has different connotations for different persons. One of my friends who has a big library in his office, I asked him, whether you have read any of these uh, books. He said, I keep adding books to the library only to increase the fees of my clients. <laughs> so, for him, the library is to get more fees from the client. For some others, library is a place to come, sit and rest. For some, library is a place to come and keep watching WhatsApp messages and uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter messages. A place where you can peacefully sit and keep scrolling the social media. For some, library is a good place for a short nap. There are persons who use the library to gossip. And there are very few who actually use library for the purpose for which it is meant. This is reality. So. This library as a concept started right from the time of Mesopotamia, 3500 BC, where they used to have clay and they used to emboss on that clay. And those clays were stored. And that's how the concept of library 
came, and this is right back at 3500 BC, and the greatest moment came when paper was used. And that is uh, one of those most important events where man started storing the materials, made the writings, everything in a more compact and comfortable manner after paper started being put to use. Until the 1990s that was the case. I would say even up to 2000 that was the case. So the only way in which we used to use a library is to take books from the library and keep paper borato. Boratrathu thadavarathu pochu. That is when we started using pads. So the concept of a library containing books is slowly changing but very rapidly changing. So as a library to my generation or a generation before me is a place consisting of books under various categories where you can go pick a book, read. But it is now taking a transformation. Library can also be a place without books. Library can be a place where you can access books not in its physical form but in its electronic mode. You can access it through an, as an electronic mode. Now there is a further development which has come which is audio books. So, Poratavana, Tadavana, and you will use a library for that purpose. Today what I am saying may sound like some joke. But 10 years down the line you will find people sitting with uh, some sort of uh, an earplug and hearing two things. So audio books have now started uh, picking up. The, the present generation is more in favor of books in the pad form or in the audio form and I don't find them getting anywhere near the physical books which we are seeing in libraries. So that is one more transformation that has taken place in the concept of a library. So the question which we have to ask ourselves is what is a library? If we think that library is a place where books are stacked and that is a library, that is one way of understanding a library. It is not necessary that library should be understood only in that manner. Library can be a place where a man can evolve. A man can really evolve. A man can really get enlightened. A man can really educate himself with new things. And so library is something which I would equate even with a puja room where you get in in order to talk with the Almighty and to purify yourself and to get more clarity, I would equate a library even to that. The present generation is faced with uh, a very big challenge of phones, pads and laptops. Basically, I would say that the biggest villain in that is the phone. As it is, we have a problem in focusing on anything. It's the, our brain is structured in such a way that it's very difficult to really focus on something. And the moment we start focusing on it, what generally happens is that we lose track of time. The more we focus on something, we get away from this time zone and that is why when we hear to some good songs or when we start reading an interesting book, by the time we turn back, we would have swallowed two and a half, three hours easily, easily. And this is something which I am experiencing in court on a daily basis. I will only know the 10.30 there and all of a sudden there will be this bell ringing at 1.30. So I will be so engaged with the advocates for that entire period. The reason why I am saying is that 
Library is a place where you can get into this focus. But the challenge is the gadgets which are continuously disturbing us from focusing on anything. I recently read that if you are completely focused in something and you get distracted, it really takes 25 minutes for you to get back to the original position. To the original focus, it takes 25 minutes. With a gadget near you, it becomes impossible. There is no way you can get into the same focus. So, usage of library is going to be greatly challenged because of distractions. Because of distractions that is going to take place at an unimaginable level. Already while somebody is listening to me, I know somebody is already meddling with their mobile phone and looking at what messages are. Most of those messages are all useless. But as a habit, the brain has got so addicted to it that it continuously distracts us. So usage of a library is to, to uh, open new new sections, to great, it is great to add books. But let us ask ourselves, how we effectively are we using it? That's the question. Inauguration, photographs, biscuits, tea, coffee, all that is fine. But that's not the purpose. The purpose is to use it. How effectively are we going to use the library? In so far as this library is concerned, I am reminded of uh, somewhere in 2013 or so, I had come here to argue some case. The admission was over very early. And uh, SNJ, as usual, had appointed me as an amicus curie for some case. So I had to work. You know, when SNJ uh, appoints somebody as an amicus curie, so I came and uh, sat down I, come, I remember sitting in one of those desks. The issue involved was that there was a decree for restitution of conjugal rights. As you all know, under the Hindu Marriages Act, if the order is not complied with for a period of one year, that by itself becomes a ground for divorce. That by itself becomes a ground for divorce. That is one issue. Other issue is how far is it enforceable under order 21 rule 32 restitution of conjugal rights and how far a husband can take advantage where he himself is the defaulter he did not comply with the order of restitution of conjugal rights and he says one year period has elapsed i am filing for divorce so this was the issue and uh, as usual i got into the court snj said Please come, you are the amicus curiae. So, this was the issue and I vividly remember that I came here, sat, requested uh, the attender to bring the Hindu, Hindu law, the judgments, this and that. By the time I completed, it took something like two, two to three hours. By the time I completed, I knew the answer for the entire thing. By then, the attenders had helped me in uh, getting the copies of all those judgments. And... Uh, with a great sense of pride, I went and stood before SNJ two days th thereafter and SNJ was all praise for me and uh, he passed the judgment where he reflected my name as the amicus curiae. Now, the issue is not uh, to trumpet what I said. The issue is that's the whole purpose of uh, a library. That's what a library can do. A library can really bring a spark in you, a new thought in you. A library can show a different dimension on a same issue which has been seen from a particular point of view. A library is a place which can enrich you. And the man about whom we are all talking, Dr. Ambedkar, what was his strength? Where did he get that strength? He believed no one except the books and libraries. And he always said that if you want that strength, if you want people to respect you, the only way you can come up is through that education. And there is no other shorter way. Nobody was able to question him. Nobody was able to say anything. And he was a man who played such a major role in our constitution. So, according to me, what made him that great was a library. And 
we used to hear that every evening the attender used to send him he will not even know what the time is he will enter the library when it was when it is open and he will leave only when the attender asks him to leave in the night so that much of focus has uh, taken place and that is why he is such a great man and what made him so great what he made him so great is a library like this so my sincere request to the members of the bar is that there is a greater significance for a library and you must be prepared to use the library with a different mode this books this physical mode i don't know whether it will survive for another 15 years so of course even today even though i am advising even today i am not able to understand anything by doing this enak apdi nagathano paper pirikano underline pannano adunude book smell alla theriyano meaning there are there is so much of influence that it becomes a mind block for me i am not able to really get over it people think that i am very good in technology nothing one i enak vandu i am not able to get that sink at all enal padicha ad retain kuda panna mudiyala whereas or paper padicha and 23rd page abdi nyam porudhu it's like a block and in fact there is a big study that is going on in neuroscience about that as to why there is a difference between reading a book and why you don't get the same feeling when you go through the same thing in a pad they say when you read a book it's like identifying certain places before you reach the destination for instance to reach my destination you have to cross one police booth and there will be one lamp post and thereafter there will be one red building and the next house is my house when we read the book this thing happens when we read a book that fourth page we did something on the 18th page osu adichom on the 21st page we had put an underline so when the destination is something which is available at the 50th page and something crops up what our brain does is it does the same thing it goes through all this and immediately comes up with an answer at the 50th page but this facility is not available when we do it in an electronic mode because at any given point of time what is available is that page you don't have the book as such with you that is the reason why you don't get the same feel when you read it but if i tell this to the present generation they will give me a name called as boomer mama they don't agree with all these things my own son says you are a boomer boomer is somebody who is born 64 and before i am not that age but he will say you are a perfect boomer what are you blabbering is what he is asking so when he is asking instead of getting irritated uh, i was just thinking what is he saying because he is able to comfortably read it in a system he is able to comfortably read it in a pad or in a phone and he is able to retain it so i thought that it's more a sort of brain mapping here we we are yet to get out of it the reason why i am saying all this is that the future libraries are going to be without physical books it is going to have chairs it is going to have all comforts but you will not find books and that is where we are moving into and those will also be called as libraries only and uh, it's uh, such a happy occasion where i i came with so much of load from the court now i am completely <laughs> relaxed and um, thank you so much for inviting me to this uh, function my best wishes to all of you thank you thank you lord chief for your enlightened words about library may i now request mr r baskaran additional advocate general from madurai bench to deliver the presentation good evening everybody i thank the president and other office bearers of this association for providing me this opportunity to stand before the sagas gear this is my maiden attempt in delivering a what i can call that even i cannot say it as i am going to read 
in delivering before this Sagas gathering and uh, before proceeding to that, I would thank His Lordship for His enlightenment on library and also the purpose to read. One has to appreciate because the very need to read has come down. As he said, in my library, in my office, there are very many books. Only if cases come, I used to take a book and that is how I started reading. But however, it inculcated me an habit to read by keeping a library in my office. That made me to read, but of course, when I got <coughs> many works, I also had not, uh, I have to agree before this gathering that only when necessity comes, I read. Otherwise, I have to apologize before the judge for saying this. This is the reality and uh, I am not uh, worried or I am not sorry to say that because many of the friends sitting here may not be also following, following this. It, uh, it has become a rare quality to read. Everybody has judge noted it. Everybody when we, uh, nowadays when we go to that, even on that particular topic, we can get a script from the pad. We did not read anything in front of that section or after that section. We are updated on that, we can do that and we can get that order from the court. This is the present stage or uh, present scenario that uh, we are doing before the courts. One thing. Now, <clears throat> coming to the work that I have been given now to speak about Mr. Vrdachalam. Instead of speaking about him, I would like to take you to his own memoirs and also writing of Justice Nagamuthu on him. It was only because of Mr. Nagamuthu, Justice Nagamuthu, this occasion has been created. He has, in a, he has created this opportunity with the office bearers of this August Association and, and only in view of his interaction with the, the President, this has been arranged. I thank Justice Nagamuthu for this uh, occasion and uh, without that, uh, this occasion could not have been made true. The first point would be this, we are members of an association here, but Radiyar is not a member of any association. It is an irony that members of association are felicitating a non-member of this association or is not a member of any other association or law association. Even worst of that, in, uh, I, I would say whether I could get it done at Tiruchirapalli, my answer would be no. There are resolutions in our association against the senior and uh, there are reasons for that. There are reasons for that. And uh, I thank Mr. The President and other office, office bearers of this association for honoring this man. At least uh, many of the people or advocates in criminal side may know how he has been dedicated to his profession. I would like to, as uh, I also take apology from the judge, I, I have to thank Mr. Vengadeshan, his last junior sitting in front of us. I have to scroll. He has given me certain particulars yesterday, but I have not looked into it. Just now he said that he had sent it to me. And I am taking, before uh, speaking about his uh, legal thing, uh, luminary, luminary, luminary session, he has written about his memoirs. He has categorized his life into four parts. He was born in 26th October 1920. On his memoirs, he has split that into four or five categories. First about 1920 to 1930, and second to 1930 to 1940, and third one to 1940 to 1950. And thereafter, he had not divided it into decades. He says that his wife is everything. For the remaining period, he says, that his wife is everything. Without his wife, he called, he, he had never used the word his wife. 
This memoirs has been written by him. Just I was looking into that while sitting here. Written to him, written by him to his children. He has twelve children, six daughters and six sons. All are well settled. All are well settled. Of the half of them are uh, citizens of U.S. and uh, he has twenty-one grandchildren. Out of the of the twenty-one, nineteen are out of India or abroad, and two alone are here in India. And uh, with regard to the, and I do not want to take you to the entire memoirs that he has written. I have uh, with your permission and with the permission of the chair, let me read a portion of that, sir. With your permission. <laughs> he had made many foreign trips, according to his writing. He had made many foreign trips. From early days, I had an inordinate desire to see all countries in the world. In 1979, 71, I had come by a sum of rupees 60,000 on my insurance policy maturing. I had obtained a passport and a visit to visa to visit England, France, Germany, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, and Egypt. My appetite was whetted by. Johnny Lai, daughter of a lawyer in Sweden, who had come to her house and stayed for two months. She had come from Sweden, dispatched by a society called the Experiment in International Living. In 1971, I made it a point to see her in her own place. It was a return visit. The entire trip had cost me only, only rupees 60,000. Venkatram and Reddy are arranged for a sufficient foreign. In London, foreign exchange. In London, I had an occasion to visit law courts. Before that, I met the Commissioner of Police with a request to have me reside for a few days in a police constable's house to gain an experience of ordinary family life at London. At random, he contacted a police constable's house and since the constable was not at home, the Commissioner made a request to the police constable's wife saying that, I am a guest from India and my reason for stay at their place. She accepted it and so I went to her house in a taxi. When I arrived there, the constable had not returned and his wife was leaving for shopping with a basket. I accompanied her to the market and after necessary purchases, I returned with her. Later, her husband, who was in the beat duty, came home tired. I found the wife immediately kneeling down and removing his shoes and massaging him his tired feet with a wet cloth drenched in hot water. The police service in England is a part of civil service and people friendly and hence much respected by the public. After staying there for three days, I went to law courts and I contacted the president of Bar Association who was also a leading criminal lawyer in England. I met him on a Friday. He was to do a session on Tuesday in the Central Criminal Court. He gave me the brief to study and I met him on Monday night. Facts of the case where the wife of the accused, where the wife of the accused had once fallen in love with the deceased, a prize fighter, but after the engagement was broken for some reason, the wife married the accused. On the date of occurrence, the husband was shaving, saw his wife going down the wooden staircase. The prosecution case was that the deceased took the wife by hand and the accused, suspecting his wife's conduct, also came down with a loaded revolver and shot the deceased to death. The lawyer asked me what defense must be taken and I told him that we should accept having shot the man dead under the impression the deceased was abducting his wife. Fortunately for the defense, the wife's version was not available on record since she died as a sequel to the appendicitis operation. Since <clears throat> her death was not in question, her statement to police is not admissible as dying declaration. The lawyer then showed me his instructions and the opinion of the solicitor which he had approved. In effect, my opinion coincided with his opinion. On Tuesday, I went along with him to the court. He, said he had sent a request through secretary to the judge asking for the permission to have me stated along with him in the well of the court. The judge agreed and sent word that we should meet him during the lunch hour for a tea. I did meet the judge along with the lawyer and I was told that his father had built the Periyar Dam at Mother District. He himself and his education at Vistri School at Cantonment Thiruchiropoli. And I told him that the school was only one furlong from, my, from our house. So I developed a good rapport with the judge by reason of his coincidence and we discussed many problems in law. After the verdict of not guilty by the jury, I met the jury. The foreman told me the decision of the jury was largely influenced by the fact that the deceased was an immoral man trying to disturb the domestic life of accused by taking away the life. I also visited with, that is how it goes. Thereafter, he writes another one thing. 
apart from the knowledge one gains from the 11 volumes one one gains from the 11 volumes one also gains knowledge in terms of pure english there is no equal to will durant his autobiography is also a delightful one to read besides other books one can profitably peruse and read Oscar Wilde, R. L. Stevenson and books relating to early American life. I have also read biographies of eminent lawyers like Sir Henry Curtis Bennett, Sir Patrick Hastings, Book of Virtues by William Bernard and Letters of Lord Chesterfield as fabulous books. Besides our English book, I made it a point to read Tamil literature books like Number Ramayanam, Dhrukural, Viryar Puranam and also Nidhi Nulgal like Naladiya. I am 84 years old. I am pending my past and I am aware that everything must come to an end. I wish all my children well. I am proud of all of you. Life has been good to me in more ways than one. Mother and I are proud parents of 12 good children and nobody can hope for many more in this life. Four, I never kept a diary. I have reconstructed the past only from memory. This book is only a collection of strong thoughts from the past. This book is dedicated to your mother who has kept me sane, sane and alive and well preserved for many years. This book would not have been written but for the active health rendered by Varalakshmi. She took down patiently all my outpourings. She is a vivacious and a sprite, a sprite, sprightly girl. I could not resist her persuasion to continue my narration occasionally much to my annoyance. Though I dedicate this book to your mother, I have to acknowledge the help rendered by my sons. Babu has driven me to Kadalur, Kayamthur and other places. Raja has driven me to Tirunelveli and typed all my written arguments. It is pleasant to recall all those cases ended in acquittal. I also remember particularly recall morally driving me to Nagar Koyil via Tirunelveli. Madhu and Deepu, though relatively young, have been sending books. I needed on various topics thereby they, they have borne the cost of my education. Muthu had been my lawyer clerk for a long time quietly attending to his work and easing my burden in many ways. He is also getting old like me. I wish him well. I appreciate every one of them. In this, in this memoir, he has recollected, even though he has, not, uh, have, he has not got the habit of writing a diary, keeping a diary, he had recollected right from his birth, 1910 to 1920, 1920 to 30 and 30 to 40, on three decades about his segmentation of his life and thereafter coming to his marital life and thereafter bringing up his children and thereafter his own ca career, how he came along with the career and how he has been successful in his career, everything has been written there. But I will have to re uh, say something about his career because I have seen him conducting cases, I have seen him arguing trials, uh, bail and uh, in, uh, uh, in short, uh, I have not seen him arguing bails for more than two minutes. Whatever be the importance of the brief, he had not taken more than two minutes for a bail. He will not take the judicial time more than that. He would say, whenever he enters the court, he would like to go, take the next seat of the prosecutor. He will never talk in the open court. He will never quarrel with the judge. He would say, it is better to fight a man with a sword and not to, might a, not to fight with a man with pen. That was his saying, that was his uh, following also, not only saying, he, even though I have seen him appearing in ministerial courts, and I have seen him arguing a case before a bench in a criminal uh, 3 not to appeal, the principal seat of our court, there also, Oh, he, his respect towards the magistrate and his respect towards the high court judge are on the same parlance. He never say, say, think that he is appearing before a magistrate or he never he would never differentiate that he is appearing before a high court judge. He used to weigh them in the very, go, very same parlance and he used to give the very same respect to the judges whether he is a magistrate or a high court judge. And he would say, uh, as to how he has uh, bring up, uh, uh, had been successful, his first point would be to say, keep an office, make it a point to sit in the office at a particular point of time, as and when your clients want to meet, he must have, he must be clear that at this time if I go there, I can meet Virudachalam. 
and that is the first point to create a sincerity within your profession and once if you create that sincerity you will become regular and once you become regular you will get briefs and once you get brief you will start reading and once you start reading you will be successful and once you become successful you become a reputed man and that is what justice namuthu has written about him in the 150th year celebration that uh, saying uh, quoting mr reddy are saying i will take you to the particular portion of that i had no godfather godfather to help me but i knew early enough that for success in my profession name recognition was an essential factor only appearances in sensational cases alone can bring that i do not think that i am exceptionally talented and deserving success people engage a lawyer not because they know that a lawyer is competent or talented they go by reputation how to acquire that good reputation is a problem one acquires the reputation not only by winning streak but also by but other quality by other qualities the first requirement is availability then punctuality one has to be in the office at the stated time then integrity and the habit of doing more than you are paid for talents of course are useful but not necessary i have known many talented lawyers fall by the wayside because of their self destructive habits of course industry goes long way towards competence i uh, this is how he used to instruct the juniors also i uh, asked how they have to behave in the courts and one important thing that he would say to the young lawyers do not boycott courts your clients pay money to attend their cases you cannot run away from the courts by saying that your association is calling to boycott and i have no other opportunity when the entire tamil nadu state of tamil nadu java and uh, uh, other association from federation and even madras high court was calling for a strike he was the lone man to go to the district court tirchirappalli and to conduct a sessions case he was not he, he didn't uh, uh, he was not afraid of anybody rather uh, i mean we have the respect and command that he had got over the profession none of the members of our association was also bold enough to block him so he was very free he was he was uh, uh, he was without any fear and he conducted the cases even at the time of boycotts and he would say yeah, at the time when a lawyer from tirupurangundram went to the police station he was uh, beaten by the sub inspector of police then the entire state arose the entire state from uh, you know, for the reason at this madurai district the entire state was by boycotting the courts but uh, it was it was situation the sub inspector of the police was left with no legal assistance he was left with no legal assistance mr reddy has said this is not the way that an advocate should behave i am as an advocate i feel nobody should be left without any legal assistance and he took the cause of the sub inspector and he appeared on behalf of the sub inspector against the wishes of the entire legal fraternity every even the bar requested mr reddy not to appear in this case by passing a resolution many many people went to meet him in his house to say to not to requesting him not to appear in that case he received everything but he continued with the brief and he appeared for the sub inspector and conducted the case i think he succeeded in that case succeeded i think he succeeded in succeeded succeeded ayya thore ayya thore another important uh, mr om prakash and sindhil and subhash babu may be uh, talking uh, may be giving information much about his uh, legal uh, appearances and other things to to be precise i would say that he had appeared for two chief ministers he never take adjournments before going to the case of chief minister i would say he had never taken adjournments to quote one thing i would say when he was conducting a case in district court tirchirappalli he received the information that his mother had died he did not say see see can adjournment before the court he conducted the case and thereafter he went and attended the funeral this was his quality he never take adjournments he has never not i have not seen him 
asking for any adjournment in a case. I have associated, I have been associated with him on two occasions. One in the case of Mr. K. N. Nehru, which went up to Supreme Court. He filed discharge application in a DBAC case. He, uh, at that time, it's, he was not for filing discharge application. He said, Mr. Nehru, let us get along with the trial and that would be better that we could see the end of the case at the earliest point of time. But due to some other things, it was decided and uh, at the instance of Mr. K. N. Nehru, he was uh, uh, persuaded and he filed the discharge application. And uh, at the time later, uh, nearly after, and the case was 4 of 2001 at the VNDC Trichirapalli. Until now, the case has not ended. And uh, at the time when he was filing the discharge application, he said, Nehru sir, you the case is not the case is not finished. If you have the case is not finished. I have uh, Mr. Patanjali and Mr. Sehra, who is his son and Mr. Sedraman persuaded Mr. Redyar to file a discharge application rather than to get along with the trial. And of course, he did the trial and got a, he did the application for discharge and he succeeded there. And thereafter, it was confirmed by the Supreme Court and it uh, confirmed with the High Court and it is now pending before the Supreme Court nearly for 18, 19 or uh, 20 years from the date of the FIR. And uh, well, that was one occasion. Later, when uh, Mr. Chief, uh, former Chief Minister, Mr. Thiru Jayalali, Jayalalitha approached him to conduct the trial of all his staff, all her cases. Mr. Jodi was a counsel. Mr. Redyar was consulted as a special consultant. Mr. Redyar appeared in cases. The controversy was that uh, the very same manner in the case that I referred earlier, there also he insisted for conduct of trial. There also he insisted for not to take adjournments and get along with the trial, which was refused, which was refused, and he returned the brief. And he returned the brief by saying that I cannot take adjournment from the courts. And that was his uh, character, and he was uh, even before uh, 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 such VIP clients, such VIP clients. He was not afraid of uh, saying those words uh, and he was able to return the brief. But the contact between Ms. Jayalalitha and uh, Mr. Virudachalam was there till the end of his life, if I remember it correctly. She was writing to him and he used to reply to her. And uh, due to political situation, the decision was taken to uh, prolong the case. And uh, that is how the matter ended. And one more thing that I would like to take you to, uh, take your attention would be two or th uh, three things, uh, many important cases. And before going to that, uh, uh, for, uh, of, uh, during his earlier life, how he struggled Abdindra the Solanapuna, he was born in the dirty outskirts of uh, Tirchirapalli district in Lagudi Taluk. He was from Garuda Mangalam village, which is a very rural village, mostly agricultural oriented. The schooling, he has to scale by foot, by walking 10 miles a day, turn the same distance. Approximately 27 kilometers each and every day he has walked to reach his, to have his schooling. And uh, thereafter, he went to Madras and uh, uh, St. Joseph's College and thereafter to Madras and uh, completed his, uh, uh, initially he joined uh, as a superintendent, as a clerk in excise department, he resigned his job, joined law college, then studied law, completed it and then become a lawyer. The, he was bold enough to take a decision to quit a government job to become a lawyer and he succeeded in that. He, he, many important cases would be with regard to uh, his uh, conduct in the cases. First case would be which took him to the fame would be R. Venkatraman, our former president R. Venkatraman's case, where he lost an election in which he filed an election petition. That election petition was heard by three judges' bench and in which Mr. Ridiar appeared and uh, the election petition was dismissed, which took him to the limelight, which the, and that case took him to the limelight in the legal fraternity. And thereafter, in Maradiyar Bridge case, where uh, the uh, 
train was uh, met with an accident and the flood washed away the entire train and the passengers. But the local villagers took the properties of the passengers and uh, cases were filed by the uh, police authorities against the villagers. And the villagers approached Mr. Virdachalam and Mr. Virdachalam at that time, uh, he was not known as Virdachalam, fondly called as Radiyat and mostly as Trichy Radia. He was known popularly only as Radia, and his name might not be, Virudachalam might not be known to many. He was called only as Radia, and when they approached Radia, Radia accepted the brief. He advised them to took a strong defense. And he let in defense evidence, and the, the persons who were accused were made by him, were tutored by him to say before the court, that they took the properties of the passengers who were washed away in the flood. But the point is, he said, the defense taken by Mr. Radiyar was that the properties were washed away by floods and taken by these villagers for safety with the view to hand over the same to the police after the flood would subside over. The recovery of the property was not denied by the police. The recovery of the property was not denied by the police. The bold defense taken yielded the desired result and the case ended in acquittal. This is how he, uh, as, uh, as you heard the case of London, this is how he has been taking defense. Truth is the defense not only in contempt, he says. Truth is the defense not only in contempt, but also in criminal cases, he would say. His first point would be in a criminal case. In a 302 case, he would be the first person after accepting the brief, even with his client or without his client, he go to the spot. With his client or without his client, he go to the spot, have a personal inspection over the spot, have a first-hand information about the layout of the uh, yeah, scene of occurrence, and he asked and he used to frame the defense only after that. This is how he has been conducting cases you know, on defense side. Yeah, in Paul's commission case and in Clive's hostel case, his fame reached uh, to the highest side. And uh, there also, uh, Paul's commission case as well as in uh, Clive's building case, uh, students were acquitted and police were charged by the court and uh, even disciplinary proceedings were initiated against the police. And uh, later, the former chief minister, Mr. M. G. Ramachandran, when he was travelling down south, when he was uh, opening the gates of a uh, train, uh, he was uh, attacked by a uh, person uh, by throwing a knife on him. He, he conducted the case at the request of the former chief, chief minister on behalf of him. Later, when Mr. Ranadrai was the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, by 1967, he suggested that Mr. Redia be called to act as the public prosecutor of Chennai city or and Madras High Court. Mr. Uh, Mr. Redia uh, returned it to return to Mr. Uh, Anadrai CN, CNA by saying, former Chief Minister, he was not belittling the nature of the job offered to him and explained that he had a large family to look and so he was unable to accept the post. The Chief Minister appreciated his stand and he did not uh, pressurize him to accept that post. And uh, he, was, he is a man who has not only, uh, who has been successful in his profession, many successful lawyers are failure in their family life. Many successful lawyers are failure in their family life. But here I would say, of the 12 children that he had made them study, he had brought them up, he had given them a very good future, he had shown them a good path to frame their own future. And of the 21 grandchildren, 19 or abroad, as, as, as I was given to understand by Mr. Rajesh. He told them, and uh, one more thing, as Mr. Janamutu has been quoting in his writing with regard to Mr. Redia, he would say that he would never ask the client to give, me, give him more fees than what he has fixed earlier. In each and every case, when he receive a fees, he set apart a sum towards the tax that he is Pay, that is payable by him. He make note of the entire uh, fees by making it note in his uh, uh, 
brief itself. Each and every year, he used to go to the income tax department on his own, file a return on his own, and pay the income tax according to that. By on receiving a client's brief, on receiving the fees, he would set apart that amount and by a, in a separate bank account, he will deposit the income tax payable. Once in three months, he used to pay the advance tax. Once in three months, he used to pay the advance tax. And now he has never engaged an auditor. One of them, his son is also an auditor, but he has not even engaged his son. He has been paying the, uh, uh, filing the returns on his own and he has been paying the income tax without uh, any default and he would say that only payment of the income tax was uh, was the most point, uh, most favorable point for him to attend to the brief without any fear of his earnings. And that is how he has brought himself to such a great position in his uh, career. I have seen him conducting cases before uh, the, uh, 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 I can say nearly seven or eight judges have become later high court judges from the district court and I have seen all the judges coming to his home, taking some legal advice on the cases pending before him and before them and Ritya used to advise them not to explain the care, not to bring the briefs but come only with the facts I will explain it to you and that is how he has been maintaining a rapport with the judiciary and till his end he has been successful not only in his career but also in his family life. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Thank you so much sir. We felt like we heard an audio book from you. <laughs> Since we are running short of time I request the other speakers to brief May I now request Mr. M. Subhash Babu to deliver the felicitation speech. Maria Vekuriya Taliba, Sinivasa Nagman of Relay, Chairala KP Narayana Kumar of Relay, Nolaha Brabu of Relay, Manu Hindi Arasa, Maria Vekuri Art of Vengadis of Relay, Palakan and Perle, and ever come on a come. Nan Maria Vekuria or Gruta Chalam into Solo Deva, Trichi, Angavale, Tamila Mudum, Redia and Ralta and Tedu. Our Redia and Ralta and the Ali Parade. Redia won the Galatil, Nan Malakarangara in the Embade Permit. Our Hill Nidhi Mandra Tele, Malak and Arathum Bode, Kuda in the Narathi Rigre, our engage Bani Rigre, our Rode Parla, Bakum Bode, Ayati, Tolayati, Napati Muna Mande, our Malakarangara, Padu Say the Rigra, Padu Say the Mudalil, or a Rangarajan in Ra, civil Malakarin in Ronda, Patanical Paniati Rigan target. And the senior district judge has selected Anna Puridan. You were criminal, Valaka, Countum Salut, Aramite, number Pascal Solabadi, Mandaya, Valaki, Ayat, Tulayati, Ambati Aramante, and the Lamode Mother Valaki, Nupode and the Valaki, Nupode were a train accident around the winter day, Nupode Petty and the Artillery within the winter day, and the Gram Bakal led to Haiti Rikarhe. Kavar Turai, Valaku Purga, Nupo, the Petty Trinity, with the misappropriation of Italy. Redia, Bolta Defense of Grade, Nagada, Petty Ertu Chaw, Arthur Tani Nerea Ward, Tani Vatrona, Pondo, the police station of Potaki Paraka, Ritu Itendo, where March Valley our inspector to the Ure or a question in the high water. Sir Ninga, Bortla, Poita, and the Gram Makilta Murunde. And the Nupal Petigli recovered pending here. So, we are going to get a boat to Tani. Grandma Makil gave the boat and I'm also a boat to Jetja. I could have been there. So, Nupal the Grandma Mandela through the Pugal Paravici. Radia, Radia, and Pesa Armstanga. Other Kadaturia, I was the Yellow Tangela. Tamanaka or very Arasian Purchia put it there. Or a or or Kachi, the very own the Kachi army in Ra, or a Kachi Chen over Pula, or his Umar and Empower, sell up the Padua Sayapur in Ra. Other year one accused it, and the sell of the Rodea, amateur. And the amateur is Maria Agria, India or Raja Ranga. Mika Tamilaka Mudu was the best of particular day. And I the Arasil Kolai, Tamilaka to the Anaka, and I can say, what's up to Turkey? Yellow Patrick daily. 
பெரியார் அதை நடத்தி விடுதலை அப்புறம் ஆட்சி மாறுது காட்சி மாறுது அந்த இறந்தவருடைய கட்சி ஆட்சிக்கு வந்துடுது அவங்க அப்பீல் அகைன்ஸ்ட் ஹைகோர்ட்டில் ஹைகோர்ட்டில் போடுறாங்க ராம் ஜெத்மால் என் கூட்டிகிட்டு வந்து அப்பீல் ஃபைல் பண்ணுறாங்க ராம் ஜெத்மால் ஆர்கியூ பண்ணி அப்பீல் அட்மிஷனே டிஸ்மிஸ்ஸு அந்த அளவுக்கு அவருடைய கிராஸ் வெரி ஸ்ட்ராங் அதே போல் எம்ஜிஆர் முதலமைச்சராக இருக்கும் பொழுது திருநெல்வேலிக்கு போகிறாரு அப்போ மணியாட்சியில் அவர் மேலே ஒருத்தர் கத்தி எரிஞ்சிடுறான் திருநாடு சவுண்ட் வழக்கு தாக்கல் செய்யப்படுகிறது அதில் எம்ஜிஆர் பெர்சனலாக அவரை ஃபோனில் கூப்பிட்டு நீங்கள் தான் ஸ்பெஷல் பப்ளிக் ப்ராசி கூப்பிட்டாருந்து இந்த கேஸை நடத்தணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி எல்லாரும் நினைக்கிறாங்க எம்ஜிஆர் பாக்ஸுக்கு வருவார் ஏன்னா இவர் மேலே தான் எரிஞ்சது ரெட்டியார் வந்து எம்ஜிஆரை டிஸ்பென்சஸ் பண்ணிட்டார் பற்ற எல்லா சா சாட்சிகளையும் விசாரித்து அந்த வழக்கு கண்டிஷன் வழங்கப்படுகிறது அதன் மேலே அப்பீல் போனாங்க அப்பீல் கன்ஃபார்ம்டு இப்படி அவர் வழக்குகள் நடத்த அந்த டிஃபென்ஸு அப்படியே மிக மிக சிறப்பாக இருக்கும் அடுத்து வந்து மிக சிறப்பான தமிழகம் முழுவதும் பேசப்பட்ட ஒரு வழக்கு வேப்பம் தட்டை நரபலி வழக்கு ஒரு சின்ன பையனை மாறுகால் மாறுகை வெட்டி பூஜை பண்ணுறான் ஒரு ஜோதிடர் சொல்லிட்டாருன்னு சொல்லி நாயோ கையை தூக்கிட்டு வருது தமிழகம் முழுவதும் பெரிய பரபரப்பு ச அசம்பளியில் எதிர்கட்சிகள்லாம் பேசுகிறாங்க அப்போ சிஎம் எம்ஜிஆர் மிக சீரியஸாக அந்த கேஸை நடத்துகிறாங்க ரெட்டியார் நடத்துகிறாரு அப்பயே வந்து இந்த ப்ரெஸ் ட்ரையல் வந்துருச்சு பத்திரிகைகள் கடுமையாக எழுதி கன்விஷன் ஆகிடுச்சு அப்பீல் போல அப்பீல் அளவுடும் அப்போ சொல்கிறாங்க அவருடைய டிஃபென்ஸு கிராஸ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் இதுதான் அப்பீல் அளவானது காரணம் இப்படி ஒவ்வொரு வழக்குலேயும் அவருடைய டிஃபென்ஸு கிராஸ் வந்து வெரி ஷார்ப்பாக இருக்கும் மெடிக்கல் எவிடன்ஸில் அவர் வெரி தரவு பாக்ஸில் டாக்டர் ஏ நின்று உடனே நாங்களாம் நின்று பார்ப்போம் மோடி எவிடன்ஸ் தான் அவருக்கு மோடி ஜூரிஸ் பண்ணி சேர்ந்து அப்படின்ட்டு வருவார் டாக்டர் அந்த பேச்சு திருப்புங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லி படிக்க சொல்லுவார் ஹார்ட் தான் என்ன என்ன பார்த்தோ அதை அப்படியே கேட்பார் டாக்டருக்கே தெரியாது அந்த மாதிரி அவருடைய கிராஸ் டாக்டர்லாம் இந்த அப்புறம் பின்னாடி வந்து டெய்லர்ஸ் ஜூரிஸ் மெடிக்கல் ஜூரிஸ் ஃபோட்டன்ஸ் அதை ஃபாலோ பண்ணுறாரு அந்த மாதிரி அவருடைய கிராஸ் பார்த்தா பார்த்துக்கிட்டே இருக்கலாம் மிக அழகாக இருக்கும் நண்பர் பாஸ்கர் சொன்ன மாதிரி நீதிபதிகள்கிட்ட ரொம்ப மரியாதையாக இருப்பாங்க பத்தே கால் மணிக்கு வந்து உட்காந்துருவார் கோர்ட்டில் அவருடைய கேஸ் பின்னாடி நூறாவது ஐட்டமாக இருக்கும் அதை பற்றி கவலைப்பட மாட்டாங்க வந்து உட்காந்துருப்பார் எங்கள்டெல்லாம் சொல்லுவார் நாங்கள் காலையில் பத்தே கால் மணிக்கு அங்கே போனோம்னா திருச்சியில் வந்து எல்லா சீனியர்ஸும் பெயிலுக்கு நாங்கள் ஜூனியர்ஸ் எல்லாம் சின்ன சின்ன வழக்கில் போய் நிற்போம் சீனியர்ஸ் டாப் சீனியர்ஸ் எல்லாம் வந்துடுவாங்க ரெட்டியார் உட்காந்து அந்த சட்ட பிரச்சனைகள் என்ன லா வந்துருக்கு இதுகளை பற்றி டிஸ்கஸ் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருப்பார் எல்லாம் பின்னாடி இருந்து கேட்டுக்கிட்டு இருப்போம் அதே போல் ரெட்டியார் போய் இப்போ ஒவ்வொரு ஊர்லேயும் ட்ரையல் நடந்துறாருன்னா பெரிய கூட்டமே வந்து பார்க்க வந்துடும் ஜூனியர்லாம் வந்து உட்காந்து எழுதிக்கிட்டு இருப்பாங்க மதுரையில் வந்து ஒரு ட்ரையல் நடத்துறாரு கேட்டார் இன்னும் எவ்வளோ கூட்டம் வந்திருக்குன்னு நான் சொன்னேன் ஐயா எல்லாம் உங்களை பார்க்கத்தான் வந்திருக்காங்க அப்படின்னு அந்த மாதிரி ரொம்ப அவர் அப்போ தமிழ்நாடு முழுவதும் அவர் மேலே ஒரு பெரிய கிரேஸ் அவர் நடிகர் மாதிரி அவர் நான் ஒரு கேஸை போய் அவர்கிட்ட கொடுத்தேன் படித்து பார்த்துட்டு அவர் கொஞ்சம் நாட்கள் ஆன பிறகு ஜூனியர்ஸ்லாம் சொல்லுவார் நீங்களே நடக்கிற பையன் தான் சொல்லார் நீங்களே நடத்துங்க அப்படின்னு நான் சொன்னேன் ஐயா நான் நடத்தினா உள்ளே போயிடுவான் நீங்கள் நடத்தினா வெளியே வந்துடுவான் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி அப்புறம் நடத்தி கொடுத்தாங்க விடுதலை ஆயிடுச்சு அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு மிக உயர்ந்த மனிதர் வழக்குகளை வந்து மிக சிறப்பாக நடத்துவார் இந்த ஐயாத்துறை வழக்கை பொறுத்தவரை ஒரு சப் இன்ஸ்பெக்டருக்காக ஆஜராகிறாங்க மதுரையில் கமிஷன் போட்டாங்க அந்த கமிஷனில் இவர் போலீஸ் சப் இன்ஸ்பெக்டருக்காக ஆஜரான தமிழ்நாடு முழுவதும் பாய்காட்டு மதுரை டிஸ்ட்ரிக் கோர்டில் ஒருத்தர் கோர்ட்டு கவுனே எரிச்சார் கோர்ட்டு கவுனுக்கு மரியாதை இல்லை அதனால் நான் கோர்ட்டு கவுன் போட மாட்டேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி ஒருத்தர் எரிச்சார் எரிச்சு விட்டார் தீ வச்சு அவ்வளோ கடுமையான போராட்டம் தமிழகம் முழுவதும் அந்த கேஸில் நோ நான் வந்து அசி அட்வொகேட்டு ஆஜராவேன் அதில் என்னன்னு சொன்னால் போலீஸ் ஸ்டேஷனில் இவர் போய் தகராறு பண்ணுறாரு சிவில் கேஸுக்காக போய் மதுரை திருப்புரம் மன்றத்தில் அப்போ போலீஸ் எஸ்ஐ வந்து அடிச்சிடறாரு கணக்கு இதுதான் வழக்கு அதுக்கு கமிஷனில் இவர் ஆர்கியூ பண்ணி கமிஷன் ஃபைண்டிங் என்னன்னு சொன்னால் போலீஸ் ஸ்டேஷனுக்கு வக்கீல் போக வேண்டிய வேலை என்ன வக்கீல் போலீஸ் ஸ்டேஷனுக்கு போகக்கூடாது அப்படின்னு சொன்னாங்க அவர் எந்த அப்போ சொல்கிறாரு நான் எந்த காலத்திலையும் போலீஸ் ஸ்டேஷனுக்கு போனது இல்லை அதே போல் எந்த போராட்டம் எந்த ஊர்வலம் எந்த பாய்காட்டி எதுவும் அவர் போக மாட்டார் அவர் என்ன நடந்தாலும் கோர்ட்டில் போய் இருப்பார் ஒரு மிகப்பெரிய தலை சிறந்த மனிதர் அதுக்கப்புறம் அவர் தமிழ்நாட்டில் நடக்கிற எந்த சென்சேஷன் கேஸை
சீக்கிரமாக அவருடைய கிளைண்ட் மிக மிக பணிபோட்டு இருப்பாங்க மிக சிறப்பான ஒரு மனிதர் அவருடைய வாழ்க்கையே ஒரு சரித்திரம் அந்த மா மனிதர் பலத்த வாய்ப்பு கொடுத்த அனைவருக்கும் நன்றி கூறி அமைகின்ற நன்றி வணக்கம் ஒரு <laughs> 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 ஆனா அதே ரெட்டியாரு ஹையஸ்ட் டாக் பேயர் கிஃப்ட் அவார்டு வாங்கினார் திருச்சி டிவிஷன்ல ஹையஸ்ட் டாக் பேயர் அவர் தான் அவர் வளர்ச்சி என்ன காரணம் என்னோட கணிப்பு என்னன்னா அவார்டு நேஷனல் அவார்டு ஹையஸ்ட் இண்டிவிஜுவல் டாக்ஸ் பேயர் அவார்டு வாங்கினார் அறநூறு ரூபாய் காலத்தில் அவர் ஃப்ரெண்டில் வாங்கி தான் இன்ட்ரோல் பண்ணார் அந்த அந்த ரூபாய் போயிருக்காரு காரணம் என்ன நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபோர் அவர் வந்து கவர்மெண்ட்ல இது ஹார்னிஸ் போஸ்ட் படிக்கும் போது டைஃபன் நானூறு ரூபா அதனால பெரிய அம்மா நானூறு நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபோர்ல அந்த சைஃபன் வாங்கினா நாக்பூர் போறாரு போயிட்டு அந்த வரதா ஆசிரமத்தில் காந்தி இருக்கார் எட்டு கிலோ நடந்துட்டு காந்தி பக்கம் போயிருக்கார் போய் காந்தி பக்கம் நாங்கள் நேருவில் இருந்திருக்காங்க போய் இதெல்லாம் வந்துட்டார் அங்கே அவர் வரதோ நான் காந்தி பார்க்கணுன்ட்டு அதே காந்தி நைட்டி பார்ட்டிசி அவர் என்ரோல் பண்ணி வைக்கலாம் இருக்கும்போது திருச்சிக்கு வந்திருக்கார் ஊரே அங்கே போயிருக்கு இப்படி போகல ஏன்னா சீனியர் ஈவினிங் ஆஃபீஸ் பார்த்து விட்டார் ஆஃபீஸில் சீனியர் இவர் மட்டும் உட்காந்துருக்கு அந்த ஒரு அந்த ஒரு சின்சியர் தான் இந்த ஆள் வளர்ச்சி காரணம் அவர் அந்த ஒரு சீனியர் சீனியர் கிட்ட அவர் ஏப்பா நீ போல ஏப்பா நேரில் கேட்க ஆஃபீஸ் ஆஃப் பண்ணி சார் நேரம் தெரியுமா அப்படி திருச்சிட்டே விட்டாரோ அதுதான் வளர்ச்சி அதே மாதிரி வந்து சொல்லணும்னா ஒரு ஃபேமஸான கேஸ் அவர் நிறைய விஷயம் டிஸ்கஸ் பண்ணுவார் அவர் ட்ரைவ் அவர் ஊருக்கு போகிறது பெரிய விஷயம் கார்ல கடல் ஊரில் நாட்டு ரமணி கலக்கிடுவார் அப்படி காலையில் ஃபுல்லாக சாப்பாடு கிடையாது எல்லாமே இருக்கும் கார்லேயே போயிட்டு முடிச்சுட்டு வந்துடுவார் கரூர்னா நான் ஏழை நாப்பு கலக்கிடுவார் எங்கே போனால் பத்தரை கூடனா பத்தே காலம் கிடைப்பார் எந்த கூட கடல் ஊர்னாலும் பத்தே காலம் கிடைப்பார் அப்படி அவர் போகும்போது பேசிட்டே போன நிறைய ஒரு குறைக்கி போகும்போது சொல்லார் நீங்கள் மதுரைக்கு போயிட்டு நீ வாரம் வாரம் ஒரு மாதம் வந்து நீ பார்த்துட்டு போ ஃப்ரீ ஃப்ரீயாக போய் சொன்னார் அப்புறம் யாரும் நோ அப்பாயின்மெண்ட் அவருக்கு யாரும் இல்லைன்னு வாங்க இந்தியாவில் இல்லைன்னு வாங்க எனக்கு மட்டும் தெரியும் எனக்கு ஒம்பதா தெரியும் அவர் இங்கே போனால் இருப்பாருன்ட்டு அவர் கிச்சன் வெளியே போனால் ரூம் இருக்கும் எயித் ரூம் ஃபுல்லாக போனால் இதாக படிச்சுட்டு தான் இருக்கும் ஃப்ரீயாக இருக்கவே மாட்டார் ஃபஸ்ட் டைம் பார்க்கும்போது சின்ன புக் படிச்சுருந்தார் ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் பிரிட்டன் பார்த்தேன் பார்த்தேன் தம்பி நான் வந்து லண்டன்லேருந்து வரும்போது டைம் போகிறது கேப் கிடச்சி புக்கு வேணா நாற்பத்தெட்டாயிரம் ரூபா புக்கு நாங்கள் வாங்கிட்டார் நல்லா இருந்தது புக்கு படிச்சுட்டு இருந்தேன் அப்படின்னாரு அடுத்த வாரம் ஒரு ரெண்டு நாள் பார்த்தா கும்பம் பிடிச்சிட்டு இருந்தது பார்த்தேன் தம்பி நம்ம வக்கீல் தொழில் பார்க்குறோம் அதுவும் பிடிக்கணும் இதுவும் பிடிக்கணும் பார்க்கணும் அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு சக்கி விசாரிக்காரு அப்புறம் ஃபேமஸான கேஸ் என்ன பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் என்னென்னா இப்போ கோயம்புத்தூர் பாம்பிளஸ் கேஸ் பதானி கேஸ் அவர் மோஸ்ட்டாக ஃபஸ்ட் அவர் அவர் எடுத்துக்க மாட்டேன்ட்டார் கேஸ் எடுத்துக்க மாட்டேன்ட்டார் அவரோட சீனியர் கூட்டிகிட்டு வந்துட்டார் ஒரு ரிட்டையர்ட் சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் ஜட்ஜ் மார்னிங் அஞ்சு மணி வீட்டுக்கு வந்துட்டாங்க வந்துட்டு டேட்டு வந்துட்டு லெட்ஸ் கிவ் யூ கப் ஆஃப் காஃபி தான் வி டிஸ்கஸ் வித் டிஸ்டர்ஸ் அப்படின்னாங்களா இல்லை தானே ஆனால் தானே நடத்த மாட்டேன் இல்லை இல்லை நடத்துங்க அப்படின்னா சரி வழியில் வாங்க எடுத்து நடத்திட்டார் அப்போ அந்த தீண்டர் கிட்டே எடுத்து பிடிச்ச ஜெயிச்சு எடுத்து கேட்குறாரு நான் திருச்சி இப்படி இருந்துட்டேன் என்ன பற்றி உங்களுக்கு எப்படி தெரியும் அப்படின்னு கேட்டாரா அப்போ சொன்னாரா அந்த கடவுள் ஒரு பட்ட பாம்பு கிளாஸ் கேஸ் நடத்தினேன் அது கேஸ் என்ன அக்யூட்டல் எடுத்து ஹை ஸ்டேட் சூப்பர் அப்பீல் அப்பீல் அக்யூட்டல் ஆகிடுச்சு தண்டனை வேண்டு சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் நான் அது கேஸ் இப்போ கண்டிப்பு பார்த்தேன் ஒரு பாயிண்ட் இல்லை நான் கன்ஃபார்ம் தான் பண்ணேன் அன்னில தான் ஒன்று பற்றி தெரியும் எனக்கு அதுதான் விஷயம் தான் அப்படி அவர் எங்கேயோ ஒரு கேஸ் நடத்தினா சுப்ரீம் ஜட்ஜ் வரைக்கும் தெரிஞ்சிருக்கு அது மாதிரி ஃபேமஸ் ஆகும் நைன்டீன் சிக்ஸ்டி செவனில் சிஎம் கண்ணாதர் சீஃப் மினிஸ்டர் ஆனார் முக்கம் வந்தோடனே ரெடியாக கூப்பிட்டுருக்காரு வாங்க தான் நீங்கள் தான் ட்ரை பண்ணி தான் பிபி ஆகணும் வாங்கினாரா சாரி சார் பிபின்றது சிஎம் சாய்ஸ் நாளைக்கு சிஎம் மாறா நீங்கள் அவர் எப்படிக்காம போகலாம் நான் இன்டர்மீடியட் பேடிஸாக இருக்கேன் நான் இங்கே இருக்கேன் எப்போலாம் தேவை பிரச்சனை கூப்பிட்டு வந்து ஹெல்ப் பண்ணுறேன் தச்ச போர்டி நாக் மேம் தென் மோகன் குமார் அவங்களும் ரொம்ப க்ளோஸ் ஃப்ரெண்ட் டூ இம் அவர் வந்து ஆண்டு விக்கே ஒன் டு சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் ப்ராக்டிஸ் போகும்போது ஃபஸ்ட்டு சாய்ஸ் இவர் தான் ஆ ரெடியாக தான் நீ வந்து எனக்கு வந்துடுங்க மேம் மெட்ராஸ்க்கு வந்துடுங்க எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் ஹெல்ப் பண்ணுங்க நீ நீ மெட்ராஸ் கேஃபில் பார்த்துக்கணும் சாரி சார் வரமாட்டேன் இங்கேயே நல்லா ப்ராக்டிஸ் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கேன் அவரோட சாய்ஸ் தான் எண்டி வாங்கினாமல இவர் ஃப்ரெண்டு வந்திருக்காரு அவர் கூட இல்லாமல் எண்டி வாங்கினா தர்ஸ் ஃபார் எண்டி ஒன் டூ சுப்
சாரி சார் ஹைகோர்ட்லாம் எல்லாமே தெரிஞ்சிருக்கணும் போ சிவில் கிரிமினல் தெரியும் எனக்கு கிரிமினல் சார் எதுவும் தெரியாது சாரின்ட்டார் திரும்பி ஒரு திரும்பி அவர் சொல்லிட்டார் அவர் என்னங்க நீ வேணான்னு சொல்லிட்டீங்க நான் நல்லா பயன் பிடிக்கலன்னு வேணான்ட்டார் ஸோ தர்ஸ் வாஸ் இது கேரக்டர் அவர் எதுவுமே எடுத்துக்க மாட்டார் அவர் பிரின்ஸிபலை கரெக்டாக இருக்கும் ஸோ தச்ச நோபல் மேன் ஒரு எனக்கு எனக்கு கல்யாணத்துக்கு கொடுக்க போய் பத்திரிக்கை கொடுக்க போனேன் ஐ வில் பி தார் இருந்தார் சார் சொன்னார் திருச்சா ஏன்பா யாராரோ கொடுத்தா வர மாட்டார் பாருன்னு அதே மாதிரி தான் கோடி விட்டு பத்திரிக்கை வந்தாருன்னா மூவத்தொம்பது ரூபா ஒன்பது எட்டே காலையில் எங்கேயும் உட்காந்துருக்காரு எனக்கு ஆச்சரியம் அது அதில் அப்பயே சந்தோஷம் தான் என்ன ஒரு நல்ல ரெக்கைன்ஸ் பண்ணியிருக்கான்னு தான் தட் வாஸ் ரெடியார் அவர் பற்றி என்னை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் அது தனியாக எக்ஸ்போ தெரியல தான் ஏன்னா ஏகப்பட்ட எக்ஸ் நடத்தியிருக்காரு ஏன் நார்த் இந்திய தென் தேசிய கேஸ் நான் கண்ணால் பார்த்துருக்கேன் இப்போ இருக்கு இப்போ இப்போ இருக்க மினிஸ்டர் நார்த் இந்திய மினிஸ்டர் கேஸ் எல்லாம் ஃபைல் டேபிள் இருக்கும் பார்த்தோன்னே அவர் கேஸ் படித்து ஒன்றுமே இல்லைனாரு அவர்கிட்ட திரிகேத்து கேட்ட பாட்டு அக்யூட் இல்லை அக்யூட் அதாவது ஆல்மோஸ்ட் சுபுஷ்வரன் அதுக்கேற்ற அவர் தான் ஃபுல் நோட்ஸ் எல்லாம் போட்டு கொடுத்தாரு அதே மாதிரி அவர் பெரிய ஹாபிட்னா ஒரு ஃபீஸ் வாங்கிடும் கேஸ் விடுதலாயிடும் ட்ரையல் கொடுத்தவங்களாம் தெரியும் உடனே பார்த்தா எல்லாமே கொடுப்பாங்க எதுவுமே அவர் கட்டி ரெடியே டேபிள் இருக்கும் உங்கள் கட்டி எடுத்து இப்படி பண்ணுறது கன்வீஷ் ஆகிடுச்சுன்னா ஒரு டிஸ்டர்ப் ஆகும் ஃபுல்லாக நோட்ஸ் எல்லாம் போட்டு நம்ம இதெல்லாம் அறிவு பண்ணோம் இதெல்லாம் கேட்கல இந்த பாயிண்ட் அறிவு பண்ணுறதுக்கு என்ன வரும் அந்த வக்கீல் அதுக்கு யாராக வச்சாலும் கேஸ் நடத்தினா எதுவும் பாருங்கன்னு வரும் இந்த கண் கூட பார்த்தா வெள்ளிக்கிழமை இங்கே ஒரு கேஸ் நடந்துட்டு இருந்துச்சு இந்த ஜஸ்டிஸ் பிரபா ஸ்ரீதவனும் கேஎன் பிஜே கோட்டில் ஒரு கேஸ் வீட்டுக்குள்ளே ஹஸ்பண்ட் ஒய்ஃப் இருக்காங்க ஹஸ்பண்ட் மாதிரி ஒய்ஃப் தான் கேஸ் பெட்ரூம் உள்ள அந்த கேஸில் ஹைலி சென்சிட்டிவ் கேஸ் தான் நோ தட் ஜட்ஜி ஏன் அவர் கேஎன் பிஜே அவ்வளோ லிபரல் ஜட்ஜி தெரியும் அவர் கேட்குற அத்தனை கேள்வி ஒன்றும் சொல்லல மே போஸ்ட் ஆஃப் மண்டே மண்டே நாயக போதுனாரு மண்டே போடுங்க நான் ஆக்சுவலி நான் அந்த அத்தை கேஸ் என் கேஸ் நான் அப்போ கேட்டுட்டு இருக்கேன் அப்போ வந்துட்டேன் வெளியே நான் தண்ணி கொண்டு திருச்சி இப்போ பார்க்கும்போது அந்த வழிக்கு உட்காந்துருக்காரு பதினாறு ப எந்த எந்த கேள்வி கேட்டாரு கிலோ நோட்ஸ் கொடுத்தாரு எதுக்கு இந்த ஜோஸ் பண்ணி தான் மண்டே ஆரிக்கு முன்ன கேட்டு என்ன கேட்டது இப்போ சுப்ரீம் கோர்ட் பில்லிங் இருக்கு சர்ச் ஏ ஜீனியஸ் மேன் அவர் சொல்ல தான் நான் கேட்பேன் ஒரு சார்ஜ் ஷீட் எப்படி படிப்பீங்க என்னவா இருக்கு எப்படி படிச்சாலும் டூ ஹவர்ஸ் இல்லாத படம் என்ன படிக்க முடியும் என்ன பாயிண்ட் அதுக்கு தான் நினச்சது ஒரு ட்ரிபிள் மண்டர் கேஸில் ஆறு ஐ ஃபிட்னஸ் ஒரு ஒரு மண்டருக்கு ரெண்டு ஃபிட்னஸ் முதல் ரெண்டு ரெண்டு முதல் ரெண்டு ரெண்டு மண்டருக்கும் ஆக்சுவல் சொல்லலை இப்போ கிராஸ் பண்ணல அது ஓஸ் மண்டாக இருக்கு என்ன சார் இப்போ அவர் கொலை பண்ணலன்னு கேஸ் இல்லைப்பா யார் கொலை பண்ணதானே கேஸ் சொன்ன தாச்சு ரெண்டு பேரும் ஒரு மண்டர் அந்த மட்டும் காசு பண்ணுவோம் ரொம்ப அவர் சர்ச் அ போல் டிசிஷன் அவர் மெயின் சக்ஸஸ் என்னென்னா இப்போ சொன்ன ஒரே வார்த்தை தான் ஒரு அட்வொகேட் எப்படிலாம் கேஸ் நடத்த விட அவங்களுக்கு கற்றுக்கணும் அந்த மீன் வரும் அது தெரிஞ்சால் போது எப்படிலாம் கேஸ் கற்றுக்கலான்னு ஜட்ஜி இருக்கார் அவருக்கு தெரியும் ப்ராஃபிட்டாக இருக்கும் போது சீஃப் படிக்கணும் கிராஃபில் தான் கேட்டு வச்சு வாங்கி வாங்கி நிற்பாங்க ஸோ அதுதான் ஒரு ப்ளஸ் பாயிண்ட் எப்படிலாம் கேஸ் நடத்தக்கூடாதுன்னு தெரிஞ்சுக்கணும் போது சச்ச மேன் அவர் பற்றி சொல்கிறதுக்கு சார் இதை வாய்ப்பு கொடுத்து அறிவு நன்றி வணக்கம் தேங்க்யூ சார் தேங்க்யூ ஃபார் த லவ்லி ஸ்பீச் மேன் அவர் ரெக்வஸ்ட் மிஸ்டர் டி ஏ ஓம் பிரகாஷ் டு டெலிவர் த ஃபெலிசிட்டேஷன் ஸ்பீச் டிஸ்டிங்லிஸ் சீஃப் கெஸ்ட் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஈவினிங் இஸ் லார்ட்ஷிப் ஆனவர் சீஃப் ஜஸ்டிஸ் ஆனந்த வெங்கடேஷ் சார் ப்ரெசிடென்ட் செக்ரட்டரி மெம்பர்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் பார் அசோசியேஷன் மை ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஆர் கம் ஹியர் ஐ டாக் லாட் அபவுட் மை சீனியர் ஐ எம் நவ் திங்கிங் வாட் டு டாக் அபவுட் மை சீனியர் ஸோ ஐ டேக் ஒன்லி ஃபியூ மினிட்ஸ் ஐ டோன்ட் வாட் டிஸ்டர்ப் ஹீ இஸ் அ லெஜெண்ட் ப்ராக்டிஸ் இன் கிரிமினல் சைட் ஃபார் பாஸ்ட் ஃபைவ் டிக்கெட்ஸ் அண்ட் he was a very most famous lawyer in the 20th century in every big briefs his name will be there my friend said all the chief ministers had a talk with him in some different occasions he helped them and all but he never went for any benefits to them that's a very important for children for anybody he never went for any benefits only once he went for a benefit that too he is called passar lawyer past senior of sailor and asked my daughter asked for a seat for medical college for my daughter not for his children today also i should remember that he used to call me is my adopted son though 12 or there i mean 30 he used to call me i used to be the thing is that is quick morning get up in the morning at 4 o'clock sleep at 9 o'clock never sees tv never sees tv only papers as sir said going through the books papers that is very nice you only go through papers and you will prepare all the things in a short while
you go there and you capitalize, you will win it. I have to say, he is the man who has done one day sessions, plenty of one day sessions, because he will take self defense, provocation, immediately. He will say, take the chief, no problem, cross examination. Napa Anjibir warning la, Pinati warning la, Mutual warning la, Katia to Kutitala, Am Kutta. He will take the self defense. It is, he was convicted, in the High Court it was said, Honorable High Court said, you cannot measure golden scales. The ruling was reported in his judgment. Same provocation, he will take it. As my friend said in London, he will take the self defense, immediately close the case, he will get five years, he will say, Rumpa asa pradi ke pa. Murder case. Life kerja kami ni anjir wajah, yel wajah semua angin kita ada. Adakah persepa? Adakah orang pergi aja? Ya, jadi umur kita ni ke mana? Nada kelar. Nampak nada kerja lah orang nampak kerja orang. Aku lihat tu macam apa? Orang nampak orang tu pakar. So, aku rancang pun ramai cerita ni. So, he was so think that practical. Even he changed the class examination after his coming. There was a long cross for one hour, one and a half hours, two hours, three hours. The class examination was going. He brought it to half an hour. That two main questions. And that two medical evidence, he was the authority to edit. So my friend said of Navakar's case, he has taken several months to go into DNA test. He bought books from London, America, plenty of places he brought books and go through DNA and cross-examination that. On the basis of that only, he went in one in High Court. The appeal was allowed. So he was so expert in the medical evidence, the two throttling and uh, hanging. He was so expert. Many of the doctors failed in that. You did it that, you did that, they will fail. Sir, I cannot say. This was the crack of his way. Same way, now my friend said, some witness, they will say, or observation manager. The witness will be observation manager. He will say, no cross. But we will say, this station will be going to put that. He said, the weed is all under the park, and the satchadrapa also told her, that is not a custom. Where are you going to get it? His words will be that. He will finish the case in that. See, he is an inclination for me. I try to follow it, but I am not able to follow. Even Deepali day, you will be in the office. Pungal day, you will wear your dhoti and put a shirt and put a brand. If you go see him, you will say, this is not my mother, but I am not my mother. What? You are not praying for God, he said. God has given me all. Why do you want to disturb him? <laughs> the same word he will say, God has given all. Why do I want to disturb him? What? He will say. So, so thing, immediately the spontaneity will be, he will always see, his senior will come to his office. He will have a chit chat for one hour or half an hour. He is near Musri. He will go near the car, send him in the car, then only he will come and see. That much respect he gave to his seniors. Even in fees, he won't take more fees. Even if he wants also, he won't ask for more fees. If hearings are 5 to 10 hearings, extra goes also, he won't ask fees. That is his reputation. They all said talent will be there. Reputation is that. Plucking money from the client, he is this irritation that another will not. One day, half hour, two hours, three hours, he will have a talk with the client. Then he won't have any talk with the client. Next, Papa, what did he have said, Papa, Andhra Vaidya, that's all. I.O. will examine, he will examine I.O. argument, if at all he comes, he will see him, he won't call. He will take all notes, then he will go off. Even in, sometimes it will be funny, he will take a VNT's case. The client will feel that, uh, judge, uh, the advocate should not feel that uh, he is corrupted. He will say, I.F. is a... Lagi elah ada buat cerita main turun. Ia sih. Ni apa dia main turun? Lepa, dia fees pak, utur pak. Kena pergi ada kat. So thing, you simply say. Ni apa dia kena orang yang terlebih yang fees itu pak. Nau orang pergi ada domain ni kelak. So he was so prompt. I was with him for two decades. Two and a half decades I have gone with him. I seen him. From even he goes to Chennai. Lord Siddhik was in the special court. He argued five minutes, he came back. Next week, Siddhik, Lord Siddhik came in a special camp court. He 
all the advocates were there. He began to scold me. What? You came? You took that gentleman immediately? I didn't have a talk with him. No, no, no this is not too bad, he said. I simply said, I am born and I am not going to. Next week he came. The part of the message is correct. What did he petition for? He said, I am not going to do that. That's why I am not going to do that. See, he was so... No cholo pata, you are so humble. Once Lord Shiv Shiti retired and went to United States of America to see his child. At that time, my gentleman went to a flight in an executive class. He went in an economic class. He is ready, you are not going to go to the economic class. He was fully with the economic class himself. He was never in the executive class. That nature is giving books. All the things. One day he came to the car. He had some books of AR books. Oh, you can see this. You can see this. You can see this. So generous. Even I never, I lost a great man for me. They may lost the father, but my mentor, I lost my mentor. He was that. Today I also follow the same policy. I even sit in the Deepali or Pungal in the office. My wife used to howl. I said, you be like Redia's wife. Don't be like this. <laughs> I am pet to her. My God, your mother, I am pet to her. She will say, all works to me only. I used to do it then. Pa, no, 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 this is an affection. I used to say. I am grateful to all, sir. All given me a chance to talk about my senior. I heard many stories about me. Thank you, Anandan. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for sharing the wonderful memories. What is more profound than history and its memories? May I now request Mr. Rajesh Vridhachalam to deliver the booklets about late Mr. G. M. Vridhachalam Reddyar to Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lordship. May I now request our Honorable Mr. Justice N. Anand Venkatesh to give one of its booklets to R. Devaraj, Advocate of Madras High Court. <coughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Uch. May I now request Mr. Rajesh Pridhachalam to give an acceptance speech. Good evening, everyone. I know I'm standing between all of you and dinner, so I would like to keep it really brief. Uh, respected Honorable Justice Anand Venkatesh, respected Advocate General, respected President, General Secretary, and members of the Madurai bench of the Madras High Court Bar Association, and to the legal fraternity, and to the custodians of the library. Um, I stand here today as a representative of the Virdachalam family. The Virdachalam family is immensely grateful and thankful to the Bar Association for, dedication, uh, for dedicating a section of the library in memory of my late father and his son. A family acknowledges the wonderful gesture on part of the Bar Association. There's no greater tribute for a lawyer to be recognized first by his own peer legal fraternity. And this honor is now etched in the history of the legal fraternity in Tamil Nadu. There are a few principles he lived by, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'll tell you, uh, you know, it's, it's so wonderful to hear all of you talk about his legal life. To be honest, I have left the country in 91, and there was a long period that I've not been as closely associated, getting to know him closely on a day-to-day -day basis. But what he has instilled in all of us, a few principles that I would like to talk about. The first one is grit, grit and perseverance. He used to tell stories of how he used to walk 10 miles every day to school, 20 miles round trip. He came from a very very middle-income family, very poor village, no elementary school in the village, no bus service, he had to walk. And that grit got him where he was. He had to change schools four times between Pullambadi, Arirulur, Lalgudi, and eventually went on to St. Joseph's College. He studied in a Tamil medium school. This is, is a man, a living proof. He was a living proof that you can still come from a very poor family, from a remote village, study in Tamil medium, still overcome all the obstacles in life at what life throws at you, 
and still succeed and reach the pinnacle in one's life. And that is because of the grit and the perseverance he had. He had a very, um, he used to write whatever he thought and I used to remember reading this uh, few thoughts of what he used to write about it. No burden enervates the strong to enterprise, no road is long. There are a lot of books he used to have that two sentences in the title. The next thing he has instilled in all of us is commitment. As uh, um, Mr. Basker has already talked about, uh, you might have heard his commitment to the legal profession. In fact, my mother used to complain that he was married to the legal profession, was his first wife, and she was his, uh, his second wife. Sometimes uh, we'll be amused as family members, sometimes we'll be uh, annoyed, and a few times we've been angry as well. April 27th, 2001, I got married. The Murtam was early in the morning, 6.30 to 8.30. Um, all the festivities were done, formalities were done, pictures were taken. We were home by 9 o'clock. Sitting in the living room, 10 minutes later we see Appa coming down the stairs, fully dressed up, ready to go to court. <laughs> and he instructs my brother, what are you doing, get ready. And he scrambles to go up, get dressed, and off they go to court. That was his level of commitment to the legal profession and people have already talked about on what happened on the day of his mother's death. He was still committed to the legal profession. It is not that he didn't um, appreciate the family, but he knew where his priorities were. His priorities to his clients, his priorities to the legal profession, took precedence over his family. Because he always knew my mother was always there to take care of us. She was like a rock behind his, uh, his life. So that commitment he has instilled in all of us. I remember my parents used to come and stay with me in the US uh, for periods of time. I used to go to work at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning because I used to work in San Francisco. Uh, I used to, uh, you know, the East, it was in West Coast. So I had to catch up with the East Coast time. They hired of us by three hours. So by the time I go to office by 5, it's already 8 o'clock in New York time. And my mom used to say, Because by the time I come back, it used to be late at night, and they used to be there. My father, as usual, he'd be engrossed in books. The only, you know, he used to say, a person's wealth is not measured by your bank balance. It is measured by the number of books you read. And the, that is the true measure of a person's wealth. So he'll be extremely happy to have books, and he'll be engrossed in books, while my mother will be, studying, will be sitting doodling a thumb because there's nothing else to do in, in San Francisco. The other thing I would also talk about is soft corner for clients. All of us, when we are young, we have uh, pets. You might have had a dog or a cat or a fish as a pet. My experience of a first pet in my life, fourth standard, I come home, there was a black artiguti at home. I was so excited about it. I asked my mom, what is it? Yaro client fees client He always had a soft corner towards poor clients because he told us the nature of where he came from, the family background, how hard it is for poor clients to find justice in the court. And he always taught us that you know, be generous to everybody, and we still follow that. My brother still follows. He does a lot of pro bono cases because of what he has taught all of us. And in fact, um, if you walk into his office, there is famous quotes from Shakespeare, King Lear. I'll read that to him. Through tattered clothes, small vices do appear. Robes and gowns hide all. Plates sin with gold, and the strong glance of justice breaks. Arm it in rags, the pygmy straw does pierce it. These lines from Shakespeare King Lear is still in his office because he always had, my father used to say that it was a constant reminder to him that the poor people should not be deprived of getting their share of justice in the court of law. And it was his job as a lawyer to do his part so that they get justice. And you know, he always had the shock turn off. The last thing I would like to talk about is humility. He, uh, one of the uh, greatest regrets is 
as a family, we used to encourage him to write because he never had any journal or anything. He always had this remarkable memory. Even the minutia details used to be able to tell us in every bit of detail the interviews he attended, the questions that were asked, what was the reaction, the cross-examination. But we all encouraged him, <coughs> other uh, uh, lawyers advised him to write about all the sensational cases he has handled, particularly from the point of law, the questions of law that were raised on his point of view. And he always brushed aside that, you know, it is not one's um, right way of gloating over one's achievements. And he always brushed aside that. In fact, I could say, when he was awarded uh, this, you know, from 1994 to 1999, five years in a row, he was single highest taxpayer. So the government, the income tax department wanted to honor him, invitations were printed, dignitaries were invited, functions were organized. When he came to know about it, he refused to go. He said, why, first of all, why would somebody get an honor for doing the duty? Second, why would everybody needs to know that I'm the single largest taxpayer? That's the humility he had. There was a lot of persuasion after that. The finance minister's coming, the invitations have been printed, you have to go, eventually he went. Same thing, Kaveri College for Women. I remember he was instrumental in getting the approval. A lot of people may not know his contribution to the field of education. Kaveri College for Women and VIT were the first two fully self-funded colleges in Tamil Nadu in 1984. They were part of a movement to change the whole educational landscape. If they changed the government policy during the period of MGR to allow for private privatizing education. And it was 1985, they started the college, 88 comes, the first batch comes out. I was in the first year of St. Joseph's at that time. He was invited as a chief guest for the convocation because he was instrumental, partly in, instrumental in getting the approvals for the college. Invitations are printed, he comes to know about it and he refused to go. So a lot of persuasion from my brother and everybody, no, you have to go, you have to. Because he was such a humble person, he never liked to go and gloat over all the things he did. I still remember an incident, um, and he had a very stinging point of view about humility, and I'll read that quote. His famous quote is, humility is like an underwear. It is essential for everyone, but vulgar when it is exposed. He used to have that stinging quote. The last thing uh, I'd like to say is, uh, you know, I want to keep it really brief. Uh, on behalf of the Vritachalan family, I thank you all for this honor handed out to my father and the family. I accept wholeheartedly with gratitude. I know how hard it is to put an event together, how much effort goes into it, all the organizing uh, activities that comes with it. I want to specially call out uh, Mr. Sinema Saragaran for initiating this. And he used to be on the phone with me almost every day, prodding me, getting information and to all everybody else who were involved uh, in, in organizing this event. I thank you everyone for freeing up your valuable time and uh, gracing this occasion uh, with your presence. Thank you all and have a pleasant evening. Thank you. Thank you sir. Gratitude is the completion of thankfulness. May I now request Mr. K.P. Narayana Kumar, Secretary MMBA, to propose the thanks. President of the board. Honorable Chief Guest of the Function, Your Lordship, Anand Vandesh, Mr. Rajesh Abhijitra, Senior Advocates, Fellow Advocates and Friends. Today we are uh, greeting and remembering a great personality, Ed Shri Viradachala Reddiya, for his contribution to this institution. The August Function has been glorified due to the presence of His Lordship Anand Vandesh. On behalf of MMB, we are uh, expressing our lovable gratitude to Your Lordship. Thank you, Roger. Thank you for your presence. Next, we are earnestly submitting our thanks to the son of Vridhachal Rettia, Sri Rajesh Vridhachalam, who and his family members are kind enough to op open a library section in the name of a great lawyer who inhales law rather than oxygen. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kind contribution. Next, I am expressing my thanks to the felicitators who have felicitated the dawn of the bar. Thank you, uh, Sri R. Baskaran, Additional Advocate General, Madhuri Benja of Madras Psycho. Uh, thank you, Mr. Subhash Babu, former President of MMPA. Thank you, Mr. T. Sandal Kumar, Additional Public Prosecutor. 
Madhuri Bija Madhra Psycho. Thank you, Mr. T. A. Om Prakash, Advocate Madhuri Bija Madhra Psycho, sir. And I would like to extend my thanks to our former presidents, Krishna Vaini, Mahendran sir, our former secretary, Balasundram sir, and the senior advocates and my fellow advocates. I am expressing my thanks to one and all. Thank you, sir. I take this opportunity to, to thank the one who thanked all. Uh, with sir's permission, I extend the thanks to Sekar, Kali, Tirupadi and Vijay who are managing our library. Thank you all.